Well, welcome to Biohacking with Brittany. I am so excited to be bringing you this episode today. This is a solo episode. It's an update. It's going to be a little shorter, but I am just thrilled to finally be able to talk about this and kind of talk to you about what's been going on. If you're new, I am a registered holistic nutritionist. I am studying to be a advanced fertility nutritional advisor. I'm a podcaster, obviously, and content creator, and really just specialize in women's health and biohacking in general. So today's episode, oh my gosh, I am so grateful and thankful to finally be able to tell you that I am pregnant. So (laughs) I don't even know where to begin with this. I don't even really have a structured plan for this episode, but I have been pregnant for quite a while and I just haven't publicly told anybody until yesterday on Instagram. So I, there's so much I want to say. There's so much I can dive into. And I do want to say that I will be producing specific episodes about all of the different stages. So when I was in my first trimester, I recorded a episode about like what I was going through, what it was like. I am going to do the same. I have to do it very soon for second trimester and I will for third trimester. I'm also going to do episodes on how to biohack these different trimesters because they're so different. And I will also be doing an entire episode on conception because this is so pivotal and this today is not that episode. And I really want it to be very educational and helpful and explain my journey a little bit and also explain to you the science and how to track your fertility window and all the things that I did and what I recommend and all of these different things. There's so much to say. So that episode will be coming. So seriously, stay tuned for all of the pregnancy fertility content coming your way. But I am just so excited to finally be able to tell you. I honestly, I wanted to do this for so long and I was so, I didn't know when I wanted to do it. To know how I wanted to do it. And I really just took my time with it. A big thing for me was that I really wanted to do it when I felt like I was ready to do it, not when the world wanted me to do it or when they recommend you do it. So the typical recommendation is like, wait until 12 weeks. And that's like when your percentage chance of you having a miscarriage lowers quite significantly. I think it goes down to about 5%, whereas before that, it's like between 15 to 20%. And then it goes down to 5%. And then I think by week 16 or 18, I think it's 2%. And so that's kind of like the recommendation is like, just to make sure that your pregnancy is viable and it, it, it is sustainable. That was kind of a factor for me, not necessarily, but I have my other reasons for just not wanting to share when. I wasn't ready. A big thing for me was my business and my career, to be honest. So I just released my Baby Steps course. This is how to optimize preconception health and fertility. And it's everything that I did to conceive. And I wanted to time my pregnancy announcement with my release of my course. And so that was a big thing that I was kind of waiting for and working towards and working so long on. So whenever I was going to release that publicly was basically when I was going to do the announcement. I also did like a photo shoot for the course of me being pregnant. So I kind of had to wait anyway. So that's that was a big part of it as well. And I'm honestly glad that I did. I think that if I had talked about it earlier, I don't think it would have... I don't know. I just don't think I was ready. I don't think... It was so personal to me and I just was not in a space, a headspace where I wanted to share and have everyone's opinions and all of these things. So I'll give you kind of a brief overview of like the timeline of things. We did my baby steps 90 day protocol. We started it last year, last summer, my husband and I did it and we got pregnant on the very first try. So. Even with a mild PCOS diagnosis, irregular cycles, and I had a hemorrhagic cyst on my ovary last summer, we got pregnant on the first try doing the protocol that I created. 
And I was so shocked. I actually just posted the Instagram video yesterday of the video that I recorded of myself the day I found out I was pregnant. I was so shocked. I should, rec- I actually might upload the whole video, but I, I didn't believe it. Like I, I couldn't believe that it would happen that quickly for us because on an average menstrual cycle, if there are no other health risk factors, there's no other health issues, you have between a 10 to 33% chance of conceiving for the, for the healthy average woman. So the odds are very, very, actually very, very low. Throw in this irregular cycle, hemorrhagic cyst, and PCOS. And I was like, oh, there's absolutely no way we will conceive on the first try. There's absolutely no way. And that fear and motivation was actually what really drove me to develop Baby Steps, my course and protocol. Because I knew that, hey, this is likely going to be more difficult for us. What can I do today so that I can make it easier in the future? And that is kind of what we did. So I actually started biohacking my fertility and my preconception a year before we started actually trying. And then three months out, 90 days out, we started the official protocol. And the official protocol has six different things you do every single day for 90 days before you start trying to conceive. Now, obviously, they're personalized a bit. You can kind of play with them, but that's kind of the idea. And my husband and I did it together. So he did it. He was sober. We were whole foods, no substances, exercising, water, supplements, all of it, you know? And yeah, we, it was wild. It was so wild. And I think because it happened in that way of holy smokes, I'm pregnant. I don't think I was ready to tell anybody because it took me so long to accept it. Like it took me so, so long to understand that this is a thing. (laughs) This is something that's happened. So that was a big part of it because, you know, all the women listening out there who have been pregnant or are pregnant, you don't obviously see any changes right away, right? It's not like you suddenly like balloon and have a belly overnight. So you look in the mirror and you're like, wow, I look normal. (laughs) I look the same. And so you don't feel the changes necessarily. And I found out very, very early. I found out 11 days DPO, which is days past ovulation. So three days before my period was supposed to come. So I found out super, super, super early I was testing and then I didn't believe the tests. And then I bought more tests because I was like, oh, wait, there's no way this is true. And I, yeah, it was, it was just such a wild time in my journey when that was happening. And so I, I took the time to digest it, make sense of it, and then think about, okay, like, what does this mean for my business? What does this mean for my career? And that's really difficult when you are somebody who runs your own business. Getting pregnant is different. I don't get to take a year off (laughs) paid by the government of Canada, even though the pay is so crappy, it's very low. I I don't have those options necessarily. And so then I was thinking, okay, like how do I transform my business with me as I'm transforming? And so that's why baby steps is so pivotal, is it's the first piece of content. It's not just a piece of content. It's such a massive course, to be honest. Like I've put so much into it. It's the first thing I've created that's really been about this journey. And that's why it's so special and near and dear to me. So I really just want my my journey to transform. And now when I'm, you know, people are talking to me about like, are you going to the biohacking conference in June? And I'm like, no, I can't go. I'm pregnant. Like I, you know, I, I can't do these things this year, these conferences, at least for the summer. But next year, when I'm talking to people about these conferences, I am talking about like, oh, I would actually love to speak at them. I would actually love to speak and talk about biohacking fertility and preconception and biohacking men's sperm quality. And there's so much even men can do to really optimize their sperm. And when I was last summer, like, And the year leading up to last summer before we started my Baby Steps Cleanse, 
treatment protocol, I was looking for this information. I was looking for detailed information, a plan, worksheets, things that I could follow that I could optimize my health and I didn't see it. Do you know if you're getting enough magnesium? Because four out of five Americans aren't. And that's a big problem because magnesium is involved in more than 300 biochemical reactions in your body. Today, I want to talk to you about the most common signs to look for that could indicate you're magnesium deficient. Listen carefully to the end because there's a special offer happening and this could be exactly what you need. Okay, here we go. Are you irritable or anxious? Do you struggle with insomnia? Do you experience muscle cramps or twitches? Do you have high blood pressure? Are you sometimes constipated? There are dozens of symptoms of magnesium deficiency. So these are just a few of the most common ones. Now, here's what most people don't know. Taking just any magnesium supplement won't solve your problem because most supplements use the cheapest kinds that your body can't use or absorb. That's why I exclusively recommend Magnesium Breakthrough. It's the only full-spectrum magnesium supplement with seven unique forms of magnesium that your body can actually use and absorb. All Bioptimizer supplements are best in class, which is why I use them. If for some reason you feel differently, you can get a full refund, no questions asked. They are so confident that they offer a 365-day money-back guarantee. Just go to bioptimizers.com slash biohackingbrittany. In addition to the discount you get by using my promo code biohackingbrittany, you get gifts with your purchase. That's right. You actually get gifts up to two travel size bottles of magnesium breakthrough. So act fast. This is a limited time offer. You can go to bioptimizers.com slash biohackingbrittany. Use my code. It's linked to my show notes on my website and start taking your magnesium today. The courses that are out there, because I know all of them, like, well, most of them, I guess, the few that there are out there that talk about this life stage, it's all about like the science, which is great. And mine obviously includes the science, but it doesn't talk about the how. It says like, here's the what, but I wanted a how. I wanted a plan. I'm a Virgo, okay? I love plans. I love printing things. I love checklists. I love to-do lists. <laughs> and I wanted a, I wanted a plan. And so I, I kind of took everything that I was seeing and I created this anyway. So that's why I'm so proud of it. If you're somebody who is like, wow, I really, really want to optimize my health before we start trying to have a baby, please do my course. Like, please do my protocol. It is so, so helpful. It's proven. It has been phenomenal. Anyway, so then we found out we were pregnant and that was in the fall. and. We are, yeah, that was in the fall and I just really needed some time to digest all of it. The first trimester, this is like a brief overview. First trimester was hard for sure. Like it was, it was, it was harder than I thought it was going to be. And I don't want to get too into the weeds of it right now, but I was really nauseous for about six weeks and it was really bad. And it was all day nausea, not morning sickness. It's like all day sickness. And so I was dealing with that. And I talk about that in my episode that's coming out about first trimester. And what I also faced was the reality of our living situation. So if you have been listening to the show, you know that my husband and I got married last year in March in Costa Rica. We have an apartment here in Vancouver. It's great. Two bedroom, two bath. It's on the ground floor. It's on the corner unit. We have a massive yard. It's like 1,500 square feet. The The yard is actually bigger than our apartment, which is hilarious. And we love this like little community that we're in. However, we both work from home. And so it didn't make sense necessarily for us to stay here. And so that's why in the fall, I started thinking about, okay, what does childcare look like? What does support look like? Like, how am I going to continue my business and who's going to take care of the baby? Like, I just don't, I just have to have things a bit more organized and a bit more planned out. And so 
that's when we decided to start looking at a smaller town and looking at a house and looking at living somewhere more in nature and less in the city and less pollution and people and everything like that around. So we bought a house in January and we are moving there actually this month at the end of April, we're moving. So I'm really excited about that because we are moving close to family. My partner, Ryan's parents are close by. They live in the same town. And my mom is about an hour and a half away, but she wants to move to the town. My brother's in Toronto. My dad's in Toronto. So, you know, there's more family support there. And the place is called Muskoka, like Huntsville in Muskoka. And it's in Ontario. And I used to spend my summers there and so did Ryan. So I, we both have a history there. It's like lake country, if you can kind of picture it. And yeah, it's, it's really nice, especially in the summer. So people call it like the Hamptons of Canada because it's very cottage country. Like the, there's a lot of famous people with cottages on the lakes there. Like Tom Cruise has one and all these people. And so we're actually moving there to live there full time though. And the town has like a population of like 20,000 people. And so it was very, very intentional and deliberate when we made that choice because I am pregnant. And we, I suddenly was faced with this idea of oh, where do I want my kids to live? It's like no longer just about me. It's about our family. Like I want to be able to have a like vegetable garden and let, teach kids like this is how the food is grown. And now we get to put it on our plate and eat it. And I want to be able to have an outdoor sauna and a home gym and biohack the crap out of my house. <laughs> and so it was a very, very difficult decision that we had to make, but I'm very happy that we did it. And I have so much to say about that. You know, it's probably not the time and place right now, but I've spent, I think, eight years living on the West Coast in, you know, a year in the middle of that. I was in New Zealand. So it's like basically my 20s have been here and I love it. And I have so many friends here and it's so beautiful. And everyone is so into health and holistic living and like California vibes, you know. But at the end of the day, I need more, like I need a slower pace of living a little bit. I need less traffic. I need less pollution. And I need more family around so that I can maintain my business and grow my business and be healthier and have a more balanced life. So that was a very difficult decision that we had to make, but I think it is the right one. It's also way more affordable <laughs> to live in a small town than where we live right now. So there's that's a really big factor as well. So it's just kind of like a sneak peek of all the hard decisions you have to make, I guess, when you start to try to conceive get pregnant, you know, you really have to make all these tough decisions. So we're moving at the end of April into our new house. And I'm really excited about that because I will finally have my own office and I will start to actually record videos of these podcast episodes and upload them onto YouTube and use them in different places. So that's been something I've wanted to do for so long, but because my husband and I share an office, it just hasn't really made sense to do that. And I've always needed a smaller space and like something that I can decorate that looks nice in the background. So now I will actually have that, which I'm really excited about. So that is coming as well. And I, yeah, we're driving across Canada actually. So it'll be me, my husband and our dog Moose, which will be great. And I, we're going to take it slow. We're doing it in about nine days because I need to pee a lot. <laughs> and with a dog in the car, you can't necessarily just drive eight hours straight every single day. It doesn't really work like that. Not when they are super, super active. So fast forward to now, I am feeling great. No more nausea. It literally went away basically the week of second trimester, like they tell you it will. And I have been feeling very, very great, like very good physically, mentally, everything like that. There are hard days and I am trying to be as healthy as I can be during this pregnancy. And I have so much to say about the medicalization of pregnancy, which is going to be its own episode. 
I have declined many of the routine checks and tests that they ask you to do because I don't believe in them. I don't agree with them. And we are planning to have a home birth as well. So there's so much content to come about this because I, I've had to do so much research. Like I've had to figure so much out on how do I have a home birth? What does that mean? What happens if all these things, like what happens if it's a breech baby? What happens if it's, if I go two weeks over my due date, like all of these different ideas. So I've been doing a lot of research. I've created a non-toxic registry, which has also been a work in progress. And if you ever want to see my registry, I can send it to you. I've been collecting and looking at brands that really focus on using materials that aren't toxic to kids, like natural materials, natural rubber, no flame retardants, you know, reducing plastic. There's like phthalates and BPA and BPB and BPS and everything. And so, you know, the world of baby products is wild, but thankfully there's so many women and moms who post online about non-toxic versions of things. So I've kind of like started accumulating everything that I've researched and put it into my registry. So I've been buying a lot of, you know, like organic clothing, organic bed sheets. The stroller that we're getting is very, very non-toxic with the materials that they use. Like the handle is made out of cork, for example. It's not just like plastic, you know, just little things like that. There's no flame retardants in the car seat that we got that your baby's going to end up sitting in for how many hours of their life. So stuff like that is really important to me as I kind of like merge into this new space. And I will 100% be a crunchy mom. (laughs) I don't even feel like crunchy is going to like do it, do it, justify how I feel about it. Like crunchy is like the moms who are doing everything I'm saying, like non-toxic, you know, childhood, babyhood and make everything from home and make everything from scratch type of thing, which I completely agree with. But I also feel like, what about like the biohacking mom? It's like, I'm like, how old can I put my kid in the sauna? <laughs> like, when do they get to do that? How do I biohack my birth? You know, like these things that are kind of next level is very interesting. So we'll see. I, you know, there's just so much content, so many things I can talk about, but I'm just so grateful that I can finally share because I got to a point a couple of weeks ago where I just felt so unaligned with my brand and my content because I'm so pregnant now that I'm just like trying to hide my body and like not sharing what I'm going through. And I just really wanted to be more authentic about it. So here we are. So happy. So excited for all of the things to come. If you are a new mom, good job. You're doing a great freaking job. I actually just met with my pelvic floor physiotherapist this morning and we were talking about birth and she told me that birth is the equivalent of running a marathon in terms of caloric burn, which I did not realize. So I need to look up how many calories does the average person burn during a marathon and I am going to burn that many during birth. I like, I guess it's probably like what, 5,000 maybe? I don't know, maybe 8,000, something like that. That's how many you burn during birth. Like it's crazy. It's absolutely wild. So I, yeah, have some prep I got to do for that. Really excited about the birth that's coming, whatever that looks like. And just really happy that I've been able to be as healthy as I can be. Definitely haven't been 100% whole foods, uh, no processed foods during this pregnancy. I wish that was, especially first trimester, that was not a thing. That was not possible. Now it's much better. I exercise every day now. I'm going swimming tonight, been doing a lot of swimming. Just the full body cardio vascular part of it has been feeling very good for me. Good for my joints, good for my muscles, such a good full body stretch. So I'm really, really happy about that. And I've really been prioritizing that. If you have any questions and you're pregnant right now, seriously message me. I have so many recommendations. I can tell you everything. I can tell you the prenatals I'm taking, how I'm exercising, how I'm prepping for third trimester, what I'm doing for birth, my birth plan. Holy, I have 
It's all in my head. I have so much to say because I spend so much of my time researching what is the healthiest way to do everything. Now, obviously there is room for human error and and life to happen in these plans that I'm making. And I will definitely record a podcast episode post-birth so that I could share my birth journey and birth story with you because I love hearing other people's stories. So I just want to be able to be honest and be open with you about that. And if you are trying to conceive right now, my course is perfect for you. If you're thinking about starting to try and try to conceive soon, it's also designed exactly for you as well. It includes men and women. And I really wanted to make a big point about this, which is something else I didn't see in the other courses that I was looking at, was there was a lack of information on men's health in them. And this is astonishing because 30% of all infertility cases are actually male related. 30%. So men's sperm is like, it's so, so important. It's so important. There's so much that you can do to optimize it prior to conception. And I talk so much about this in the course. And that's why throughout Baby Steps, there are modules and lessons dedicated to men's health because they are very important to this discussion. It's not just about the woman. It's about both people. And yeah, I just want to really, really reiterate that because a lot of the time men, you know, it's not really seen as like that. It's not really seen as important, although there is so much you can do. And actually, we tripled my husband's sperm count after he did my baby steps protocol. So I did a test with him before. So we did count, sperm count, motility, mobility, and morphology. And we tripled it, which again, I did not think was going to happen. So we tested him before and after, and we were shocked, absolutely shocked. And that goes to show you how lifestyle, diet, biohacks, the right supplements can really, really make a massive like difference in your body when you do it for a minimum of three months, right? And that's what also all the research also says is like, it has to be a minimum of three months of 90 days. You can't just be healthy for a week and then start trying to conceive and just assume it's going to go okay, you know? So I'm really proud of this moment. I'm so happy that you listened to this episode. Thank you so much. And my DMs are always open. If you want to chat, I will 100% be moving into the optimizing healthy motherhood stage now. And I'm really just happy to be able to be open about it and talk to you about it. And yeah, it's, it's a, it's an exciting time. I'm still doing my certification to become a fertility, advanced fertility nutritional advisor. I'm almost done. And so I'm actually including consultations with my course now. So you can sign up depending on when you're listening to this, it might still be on sale or it might not be, but there will be an option for you to add on a consultation with me so that we can go over your personal questions. Like I get a lot of personal questions in my DMs that are very, very specific to people's cases. And so I would love, 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 love to sit down with you, have you do the course, and then you can ask me these specific questions. I'm really here for your support and I really just want to help you. So thank you for listening. There will be a new episode that comes out next week. I put out episodes every Tuesday and Friday. You can follow me on Instagram at biohackingbrittany. Please rate the show and leave a review if you want to. I would really appreciate that. And thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to another episode of Biohacking with Brittany. If you're interested in finding the show notes or the sponsors for this episode, you can do so on my website, which is biohackingbrittany.com. Remember to follow me on Instagram where I'm most active. My handle is at biohackingbrittany. And if you're interested in working together and you want to email me directly, you can do that. My email is info at biohackingbrittany.com. And I look forward to hearing from you and having you tune in next week.